Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia aka Call Me Crafty Owl and I am here today on the Not Too Shabby channel to share with you a shaker card that I created using the upcoming June Box of the Month kit. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the Not Too Shabby channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. There is a whole team of creators who share their inspiration and ideas here. I know that you'll love to be subscribed. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. We're so glad that you're here again. In just a couple days, Not Too Shabby is going to release their newest box of the month kit. And it, you might be able to tell from the goodies in front of me that this kit is mermazing. There are tons of ocean and mermaid and nautical and fish themed goodies in this month's kit. This kit does go on sale on June 1st. I will have a link to the subscription page in the description box below if you want to go ahead and check that out and get subscribed. And speaking of June 1st, some of the design team members will be participating in a special hop with a giveaway. So make sure that you stop back by and check that out. Jamie is going to be giving away a $25 gift certificate to the shop. So I know that you'll want to hop along and get entered to win that. I'm super excited to be participating in the hop this month. I will be on my channel on Tuesday sharing four cards that I created using some ephemera from this month's kit. I have a little sneak peek up on the screen now. Today I'm going to be creating a shaker card using just a small portion of the goodies in this month's kit. One of the paper pads in this month's kit is a special slimline paper pad. Each of these pieces is four by nine, so it's sized for about any size of slimline that you like to make. I pre-chose three papers from that paper pad. The first one is this blue and green glitter look paper. I love that you get the look of glitter, but not the mess. Second is the light blue paper that I'm going to kind of use for the watery background. And then finally the mermaid scale paper. This will go well with the little mermaid that I'll be stamping from the Be Mermazing stamp set. I'm going to stamp her. This little doodad here, don't know what it is. You can let me know in that comment section below. And then I'll be using one of the sentiments. Right now I'm not sure yet which one. And I also grabbed out the sequins that came in my package. I thought these were great for the theme. And then I'll also be adding some from my own collection later. Speaking of my own collection, as I get into the process, I will let you know any other thing I add in that voiceover. But if I ever leave you with any questions, leave those in that comment section below and I'll come back and get those answered for you. Let's get crafty. The first thing I did for today's card was stamp my mermaid image and that little sea doodad onto some Strathmore Bristol Smooth paper. I use VersaFine Onyx Black and I like to use Strathmore because I will be coloring with Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. Because this stamp set is new, I did stamp it a couple times to get a nice crisp black image, but I know that next time I go to stamp it, it will already be prepped. Once I had both of those stamped, I then took this piece over to my brother's scan and cut and used it to cut the images out. I pre-chose all of the Zig Clean Color markers that I will be using today and I tried to go with the same colors from the paper. I also have that little scrap of white cardstock to clean my colorless blender off with and I am protecting my work surface with that clear cutting mat. Now to hold my pieces in place while I color them, I found using a piece of Glad Press and Seal was a really nice light hold where I could hold my pieces down without getting my fingers all inky, but then I can pull it up later and it doesn't get ruined. 
I'm going to start coloring my image today by coloring the mermaid's skin and I want her to have a nice sun-kissed glow. So I will be using violet and mustard and to get a nice tan color I lay down that violet first where I want my shadows to be and then I pull that into the rest of her face with my colorless blender. Then what I do with the mustard color marker, which by itself turns out kind of a yellowy orange, I go over those same shade lines and then once again I pull that in over the violet and then I get a nice tan color. I learned this from watching some coloring videos lately where I wanted to learn how to do different colored skin tones. I just love this shade of brown. I finish off the rest of her body with those same two colors before moving on. Next up to color was my mermaid's hair. I chose cobalt blue and Persian blue, and I'm gonna do kind of a little ombre here. I use the darker one, which is the Persian blue, and I color up from the bottom on her main head of hair and on her bun. Now you'll notice I stopped about a third of the way up, and then I brought in the other marker, and I colored in a third of the way down. After that color was laid down, I brought back in that colorless blender and starting with the lighter color, I pulled it part way into the open white area and then I cleaned that off on my scrap of paper and then I went to the dark blue and colored that the rest of the way in. I just liked how these two blended together and I just thought this hair color was fun for a mermaid. I finished coloring the mermaid's body and tail using a combination of cobalt blue, Persian blue, and Persian green. And finally for the coloring, I will be coloring in my little sea doodad with peach pink. I place the color where I want the shading to be and then I pull back in that colorless blender to spread the color to the rest of I think now I know this is called coral. I will be placing the mermaid scale paper on the inside of a vellum card base. I like how you can see it just a little bit from the front. Because this is already four inches wide, I cut that down to five and a quarter inches tall. I cut down the light blue pattern paper to four and three quarters inches tall by three and a half inches wide. For the glitter look paper, I created a cut file that had three wavy looking windows in it and I cut that piece with my silhouette. And because every shaker card needs a window, I pulled in a thin piece of clear cardstock and I cut a piece that's slightly smaller than my wavy glitter paper to three and three quarter inches wide by five inches tall. Now that all of the pieces were ready for the shaker, it was time to get that put together. I missed the first part of me putting adhesive on the frame, but I just used my ATG there and I went around the outside edges and across each of those inner pieces. Then I carefully laid my plastic down on top of that. It is kind of staticky, so I had to be careful. And then I got out my thin foam tape to create the frame for my shaker bits. When that was in place, I went ahead and pulled the release paper because I find if you do it later that the window shakes even more. So I like to put my goodies in after I pull that. And then my special surprise for this card is I brought in some sand for my windows. I originally wanted a nice heaping spoonful of sand in each of those sections. I found out later I probably could have used a little bit less, but I think I liked how it ended up looking. Once my sand was flattened out so I could put my backer on later, I brought in some of the sequins from the mix from the kit, and I placed one of those seashells in each window and a few of the blue sequins. Next, I took the light blue backer pattern paper and I placed that upside down onto my shaker and I made sure to press nice and firmly where the foam tape would be. I really love how this turned out and it is so fun to shake. 
I started to finish the card off by placing the mermaid scale paper on the inside of the vellum card base and then I added the shaker to the front. Now because this is pretty heavy I did add a little bit extra on there. I played around a little bit with the placement of the mermaid and the coral and once I had those where I wanted them I brought back in my adhesive and I just adhered these flat to the front of the shaker card. The final thing I need to do for this card is add a sentiment and I will actually be doing that on the inside and I'm also going to be stamping that mermaid again. But because I want her kind of watermarked in the background so I could write the personal message over her, I am going to stamp off. And I am using a piece of clear cardstock now to help me line that up in my Misty just so if there was any ink left over from the front, I didn't transfer that to the inside of the card. You'll see that I did do a test earlier to make sure that I liked that lighter color and I did. So I inked my mermaid up once in the light blue, stamped off on that scrap, and then stamped on the piece that will go on the inside of the card. Finally, I set up my sentiment which says you are mermazing and I stamped that in a teal ink. This piece got adhered to the center of the inside of the card and here are a few looks at the finished piece. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's shaker card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until the next video, I hope you're having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. Now I hope that you'll consider clicking on one of the playlists or videos I have linked above.